The story of Queen Jezebel has to be the story of one of the strongest women ever recorded in the history of the Bible, howbeit in a negative way. When the name Jezebel is mentioned, wickedness, cruelty, unparalleled strength, cunning and crafty devices is immediately associated. The manner in which this queen died had also has to be one of the most disgraceful deaths of a royal ever recorded in the scripture. We'll come to that in a bit. I'm really excited to share the story of the queen named Jezebel with you because there are so many lessons, good and bad, to be learned from her story. You might be wondering, good lessons? Yes, good lessons. These lessons would be applicable to our current generation and day-to-day -day life. Are you ready? Who is Jezebel? Jezebel was the daughter of Ethbaal, king of Sidon. She married Ahab, son of Omri, king of Israel. According to genealogies given in Josephus and other classical sources, she was the great-aunt of Dido, queen of Carthage. As the daughter of Ithobiel, she was also the sister of baal Esur II. 1 Kings 16 verse 31 highlights that Ahab was already sinning against God before they married but made it worse by violating commands against Israelites marrying foreigners. Sidonians worshipped several pagan gods, most notably Baal, and Ahab made the worship of Baal and Asherah acceptable in Israel. Jezebel not only strongly influenced Ahab to worship Baal, she also ensured that everyone who stood against her paid for it dearly. The marriage between Ahab and Jezebel is arguably the first time the Bible records a marriage alliance between the king of Israel and a heathen princess and this alliance resulted in a catastrophic event for all of Israel. So Jezebel is mostly associated with four incidents in the Bible and we would look deeply into these four incidents. 1. The relationship between Jezebel and King Ahab. 2. Jezebel and Naboth. 3. Jezebel and Prophet Elijah. 4 death and punishment of Ahab and Jezebel. We would look into these first three interwoven incidents quickly. Let's start with the relationship between Ahab and his wife Jezebel. The very first time we hear about Ahab is in 1 Kings 16 verse 30. And Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all who were before him. History has it that Ahab had the dubious distinction of being the most callous king who reigned over Israel up until his day. One would expect almost anything from a man that mischievous and a little down the scripture. We're not surprised to see in 1 Kings 16 verse 31. And it came about as though it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he married Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians, and went to serve Baal and worshipped him. Considering the constant menace of Syria and the continuously increasing threat of Assyria, Ahab decided that he needed an alliance with this neighboring nation, so he made a treaty with the king of Phoenicia and sealed it by marrying his daughter. That is how Jezebel happened to move to Samaria, the capital of Israel. And there is only one way to describe it, a catastrophe. Jezebel had grown up initiated into the worship of Baye and his female consort, Astarte. Baal was considered to be the god of the land. Now imagine what it would have done for a wicked king to form an alliance with an equally wicked princess who had no regard for Yahweh, the god of the Israelites, now Jezebel was a strong female leader, an able administrator, a crafty thinker, self-willed, and a domineering wife. Just the right balance for Ahab, who was an evil but weak king. Ahab was a selfish and wicked king who, despite his greed and ungodliness, lacked the required crafty and cunning device to get all he wanted. This is where Jezebel came in. She was the perfect match for him. 1 Kings 21 verse 25 says something profound. There was never anyone like Ahab who sold himself to do evil in the eyes of the Lord, urged on by Jezebel his wife. He behaved in the vilest manner by going after idols, like the Amorites the Lord drove out before Israel. Jezebel was a strong and determined politician who sought to establish her belief in the land of Israel. Her devotion to Baal was for her a culturally normal thing to do. Baal was a god who was worshipped through music, dance, partying, and debauchery, and sexual promiscuity, and this became the order of the day in Israel. 
by reason of her domineering nature, she got Ahab to build a house for Baal beside the palace in Samaria, as well as an Ashtoreth, that is, an idol of the fertility goddess. Then she brought 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Ashtoreth from Phoenicia, housed them in the palace, and fed them in royal style. So their duties would have been to promote the worship of Baal and Ashtoreth throughout the land, such height of confidence. Later in this video, we would examine the story of Jezebel, Ahab, and Naboth. It's what many people, however, do not also know about the union of Ahab and Jezebel is the influence it had on their children and their children's children. I believe that this is such an important part because it has embedded in it several lessons for us to learn. Ahab and Jezebel procreated, and their influence was loud in the lives of their children. This is often the saddest side effect of lives like Ahab's and Jezebel's. Two sons of Ahab and Jezebel later ruled in Israel. The first was Ahaziah. Of him God would say in 1 Kings 22 verse 52 to 53, And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father, and in the way of his mother, and in the way of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who caused Israel to sin. So he served Baal, and worshipped him, and provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger according to all that his father had done. The second son to reign was Jehoram. As Jehu rode to execute vengeance on the house of Ahab, Jehoram cried in 2 Kings 9 verse 22, Is it peace, Jehu? Jehu summed up Jehoram's reign with his reply, What peace, so long as the harlotries of your mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many? Ahab and Jezebel also had a daughter, Athaliah, and she married another man named Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of the southern kingdom of Judah. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, just as the house of Ahab did. This is not far-fetched, because Ahab's daughter was his wife, and the fruit does not fall too far from the tree. Her husband also did evil in the sight of the Lord. So it was that the evil influence moved south. At Jehoram's death, his son by Athaliah became king of Judah. Ahaziah was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Athaliah, the granddaughter of Onui. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord like the house of Ahab, for they were his counselors after the death of his father, to his destruction as seen in 2 Chronicles 22 verse 2 to 4. And the evil influence lived on. Jezebel and Naboth. The story of Naboth begins in 1 Kings 21 verse 1 to 16. Now there was a man named Naboth, from Jezreel, who owned a vineyard in Jezreel beside the palace of King Ahab of Samaria. One day Ahab said to Naboth, Since your vineyard is so convenient to my palace, I would like to buy it to use as a vegetable garden. I will give you a better vineyard in exchange, or if you prefer, I will pay you for it. But Naboth replied, The Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance that was passed down by my ancestors. So Ahab went home angry and sullen because of Naboth's answer. The king went to bed with his face to the wall and refused to eat. 1 Kings 21 verse 1 to 4 Naboth, a man who feared God and wanted to honor him, owned a vineyard near the palace of King Ahab. Ahab demanded that Naboth give him the vineyard for the purpose of an herb garden. He offered to improve the profitability of the vineyard from its current state or pay him for the vineyard. Naboth denied this request because it was an inheritance from his ancestors. It's the Bible records that Ahab was sullen and angry and went home to sulk in bed. A quick pause here. We see a king, a whole king, and the husband of Jezebel sulking in bed and refusing to eat simply because one of his subordinates refused to give in to his greed. Back to the story. Now, when Jezebel saw him, she mocked his powerlessness and told him she would cheer him up by handling it herself. Let's see what the Bible says she did in 1 Kings 21 verse 5 to 7. But Jezebel his wife came to him, and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad, that thou atest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money. Or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for its. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? 
Arise, and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. Jezebel concocted a scheme to get the vineyard. She forged letters under Ahab's name and seal requesting a fast. Additionally, the letters ordered Naboth to be charged with blasphemy against God, which would be supported by the false testimony of two scoundrels. The orders further demanded that Naboth be stoned to death. 1 Kings 21 verse 11 And the men of his city, even the elders and the nobles who were the inhabitants in his city, did as Jezbel had sent unto them, and as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them. They proclaimed a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belial, and sat before him, and the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city, and stoned him with stones, that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. Jezebel's plan was successfully carried out exactly as planned, and Naboth was executed. Jezebel would stop at nothing in ensuring that her plan succeeded, even if it meant murder. She killed a man simply because he refused to release his land. We see a similitude of this in our current world among workers, families, and even world powers. The socio-economic divide does not make things any better. The rich striving to be richer, even at the expense of those who do not have enough, it's even given flashy names like street smart, maintaining wealth, financial wisdom, and so on. Now, this is not against you building wealth. As a matter of fact, God desires that we prosper. Think about it. Jezebel and Ahab were powerful king and queen. He probably had a hundred or a thousand other lands to himself, but he still wanted the one piece of land helped by one of his people. This is another attribute of the Jezebel spirit. The desire to do everything possible to get something. If you're a believer and you find yourself making statements such as I don't care what must go, I want this thing and I would get it. There's a problem. The Jezebel spirit is sneaky and manipulative. Thus, when someone calls another person a Jezebel, one of the things it typically refers to is the crafty nature of a person. Jezebel didn't often do the dirty work herself in scripture. Instead, she connived with others to get it done for her. For instance, when a man named Naboth refuses to give the land of his ancestors over to the king, a vineyard, 1 Kings 21, Jezebel writes letters in her husband's name and seal to get Naboth killed so she and her husband could acquire the vineyard. An irony in this story is that Jezebel would falsely accuse a man of blaspheming God when she had spent her entire life cursing God and even murdering his prophets. This leads us to the next part of Out Discussion. Jezebel and Elijah. Ezebel and Ahab were notoriously known for killing the prophets of the Lord. Elijah, a prophet of the Lord, then informed Ahab that there would be drought and famine in the land until he says otherwise. During the third year of the drought, Yahweh told Elijah it was time to go home. He was to show himself to Ahab, even though Ahab had been looking everywhere far and wide to kill him. Elijah was going to tell Ahab that rain was about to fall. The famine from the drought was so severe that King Ahab was looking everywhere for grass to feed his horses and mules. If those animals all died, his army would be powerless against their enemies. Elijah sent word to the king that he needed to see him face to face. Elijah challenged Ahab at their meeting to bring all the Israelites and all the prophets of Baal and Asherah, 850 of them, to Mount Carmel. He alone would represent Yahweh there, as his name meant Yah is God. On Mount Carmel, he asks all the people, How long will you waver between two different opinions? If Yahweh is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. In fact, see how the scripture beautifully narrates this story in 1 Kings 18 verse 22. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets choose one for themselves, and let them cut it into pieces, and put it on the wood but not set fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord, the God who answers by fire. He is God. Then all the people said, 
What you say is good. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one of the bulls and prepare it first, since there are so many of you. Call on the name of your God, but do not light the fire. So they took the bull given them and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Baal, answer us, they shouted. But there was no response. No one answered. And they danced around the altar they had made. At noon Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a god. Perhaps he is deep in thought or busy or traveling. Maybe he is sleeping and must be awakened. So they shouted louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until their blood flowed. Elijah mocked them, and then it was his turn. He then instructed the false prophets to soak his bull in the wood and the ground with water. They poured water all over everything three times as Elijah directed, even filling a trench with water circling the sacrifice. Then Elijah began to pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel and asked God to validate himself and his servant and turn the hearts of the people back to himself. Immediately fire fell from heaven and lapped up everything, including the rocks, the dust and the water in the trench. The people all said, Surely Yahweh is God, and they fell on their faces. Elijah then had all the false prophets rounded up and took them down the mountain and put them to death. Elijah went to Ahab and told him to go back to his palace as the flooding rain was about to start. When Ahab returned to the palace, he informed Jezebel all that had happened and Jezebel swore that before the end of the next day, she would kill Elijah and the Bible records something really profound. Elijah the man who was not scared of over 800 Baal prophets, the man who called down fire, the man who had just proven that Yahweh was the only true God, who just prayed for rain to fall, and it fell, ran away on hearing the threat of Jezebel. Elijah was terrified and fled into the desert, where he prayed for the Lord to take his life, then fell asleep under a broom tree. A messenger from the Lord came to him twice, urging him to eat and drink. After doing so, he journeyed forty days in the wilderness to Mount Horeb, where he hid in a cave. The voice of the Lord came to him and commanded him to stand out on the mountain. The Lord had to speak to Elijah before he could return back to Israel upon the threat of a woman. What a woman! He prophesied that Jezebel would be devoured by dogs at the wall of Jezreel. This leads me to the final discussion on this topic. Death of Jezebel You might be wondering what eventually happened to this great and fearless woman. What was her end like? So after Elijah fled into the woods, he had an encounter with God and was feeling like he was the only prophet left. God told him that he had reserved a remnant of 7,000 people to himself who had never bowed their head to Baal or uttered vain words. So the Lord told him to anoint Jehu son of Nimshi as king over Israel. Next, anoint Elisha son of Shaphat from Abel Meholah. He will be the prophet who takes your place. Jehu will kill anyone who escapes Hazael's sword, and Elisha will kill anyone who escapes from Jehu's sword. A few years later, Ahab perished in battle with the Syrians. Jezebel lived on for approximately another ten years. Elijah's successor, Elisha the prophet, equally determined to end Baal worship, had a military commander named Jehu anointed to be king of Israel, an act that provoked civil war for Jezebel's son Jehoram, then ruled. Jehu killed Joram, then proceeded to Jezreel, where Queen Jezebel was as she was his next obstacle for his promotion to the king. In 2 Kings 9 verse 30, we see that. When Jezebel heard about it, she put on eye makeup, arranged her hair and looked out of a window. These eunuchs threw her down and the horse trampled on her. Some hours later, Jehu told his men to go bury Jezebel's body, but when they went to the scene, they found much of her body had been eaten by dogs. This was a fulfillment of Elijah's prophecy and Elisha's repeat of the prophecy. However, an end always comes to anything and anyone that raises his head against the Lordship of Yahweh. This video has been laced with quite a number of lessons to learn while the story was being told. However, two important lessons aside from the ones I earlier mentioned is 1. Good qualities can be used in an ungodly or evil manner. Imagine if Jezebel channeled her gifts of being a strong and firm leader in establishing the reign of Yahweh. 
That gift that you have can be used for God. It's not a tool to be used in manipulating others. 2. Marry well. The importance of marriage in a person's life cannot be overemphasized. It can make or mar you. Thank you for watching till this point. See you in my next video.